Hi then guys, this is an introduction to one of possibly the biggest pieces of GCSE maths and above, trigonometry. So trigonometry is very, very powerful. It can do a lot more than hang around inside of triangles, but we don't really need to worry about that in this lesson, but trig is very powerful. So, Sokotoa. Some of you probably have heard of Sokotoa, some, for some of you trigonometry might be a completely new adventure. So trigonometry is used inside of, well this sort of trigonometry is used inside of right angled triangles, strictly right angled. Now we can either use two side lengths to find one of the two acute angles, we know they're always going to be acute because we're inside a right angled triangle. Or we can use one side length and one of the acute angles to find another side length. Uh, so it's quite closely linked to Pythagoras. In Pythagoras, if you know two side lengths of a right angle triangle, you can use those to find the third. Whereas trigonometry uses or finds angles as well as lengths. So it's a little bit more powerful. Now then. Before we get going, uh, I want to show you this symbol here. It's the Greek letter theta. It's very, very often used to represent an angle. Uh, it makes a nice change from using x for everything. Try and get used to using theta uh, because x can pop up as one of the side lengths or whatever. But theta in general should never be used to represent a length. It should always be an angle. So we're going to use theta to represent our angles in this video. So, the sides of the triangle each have their own uh, special name. Uh, now then, two of the sides change. But this longest guy, the diagonal of the triangle, the side opposite of the right angle, is always, always, always called the hypotenuse. Uh, now, hypotenuse, I only just learned actually, actually means under tension. And I think the name comes from the fact that uh, the hypotenuse might look, <clears throat> might look like a piece of string being pulled by the other two legs of the triangle. I don't know, just me. Uh, so, anyway, that aside, that is always called the hypotenuse. The other two sides, though, do change depending on which angle we are dealing with, either if it's the one at the top or the one down at the bottom right. So let's have a look at what they're called. So we're going to be playing with the bottom right angle. So that's going to be our angle theta. Now this side uh, that is opposite the angle uh, really originally is called the opposite. Now sometimes when I'm teaching this and people find it hard to see, I tell them to imagine the, the angle, uh, imagine that it looks a little bit like an eye and the side that it's looking at is opposite to it. So it's the opposite side. Okay, what about the other side then that runs out of the angle? So this chap running out of the angle along the bottom in green, this guy is called the adjacent. Okay. Now then, as I said, the, those two sides do change depending on which angle we're playing with. So this uh, triangle in the top left is the one that we just worked through, where we were playing with the bottom right angle theta. So we've got the opposite up to the left and the adjacent running along the bottom. Uh, but this one on the bottom right, in that triangle, we're now playing with uh, the top left angle. Uh, so the adjacent and the opposite have switched around. So the opposite is now running along the bottom. Remember that's the side that the eye is looking at, if you like. And the adjacent is now running down the side of the triangle. So it does matter which angle you're playing with. But notice though how the hypotenuse has stayed constant in both triangles. Okie dokie. So when you're playing trigonometry We've got three functions, so I call them the three amigos. Uh, now they are sine, cosine, and tangent. So if ever you hear your teacher or whoever calling uh, S-I-N sine, and you're wondering why we're not calling it sin, 
is because the whole name of the function is actually sign. Um, I remember that used to uh, bother me quite a bit actually. Uh, but that's why we call it sign and not sin. But then bizarrely we do just call cosine and tangent, cos and tan. So they'll be on your calculator, they'll be in that order. Uh, on mine they're just above the on button. They're quite easy to track down. Okie dokie, so we've got three trigonometric identities for sine, cos and tan. Now an identity just means something that's always true. Uh, we can think of it as three formulae, if you like, for each of the functions. Now the three functions are, also notice here, sorry, that I've abbreviated the side lengths a little bit. See, hypotenuse adjacent and opposite are quite big words to be constantly writing down, especially in maths where we like to keep things nice and compact and um, nice and efficiently displayed. You can even abbreviate them to O, A and H if you like. Uh, that's what I do. I think really that's, um, that's generally what most people will do. But probably while you're learning the names of the sides, it's a good idea at least to keep them as op, hip, and edge. So our three identities. Sine of theta is equal to the length of the opposite divided by the length of the hypotenuse. Cos of theta is equal to the length of the adjacent divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And tan of theta is equal to the length of the opposite divided by the length of the adjacent. Now, if you're looking at those, I'm thinking, how the hell am I supposed to remember those three? I've got enough to remember. Well, that's finally where Sokotoa comes in. So the sooner you get Sokotoa lodged into your subconscious, the easier trigonometry will become for you. Sokotoa is a nice way to remember the three functions uh, in a sort of word, but it's not really a word. Uh, but Sokotoa, if you go and ask anybody out on the street, uh, Sokotoa, what that means, anybody with any sort of maths education, I imagine it's quite likely they'll be able to tell you that's trigonometry. So how does Sokotoa help as well? Every three letters of Sokotoa is one of the identities contained. So if we take so for example, S O H, S is sine, O is opposite, H is hypotenuse. So SO tells us that this, uh, the sine identity is to do with the opposite and hypotenuse. CA, C A H, COS is the C bit, and then we've got the adjacent and the hypotenuse, and then TOA at the end, T O A, T for tan, O for opposite, A for the adjacent. And they all run the same way as well, so so uh, sine equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Ka, cos is equal the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And toa, tan is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So, Sokotoa helps us remember these three identities in quite a nice, easy to remember format. Now that's the introduction to Sokotoa. Video 2 will be having a go uh, using Sokotoa. I might split them into separate sine, cos and tan videos. We'll see. Hope it's useful guys and don't forget to subscribe. Cheers!